to the coaching game. I'm Laurie Lawson, and tonight my guest is Doretta Ganson. Hey, Doretta. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Doretta's a repeat, and it was because as she just thought she continues to amaze me. So I we decided she has to come back <laughs> because last time when I when I had Doretta, I, d I was so impressed. I met her at one of my workshops, and. Um, I said, oh my God, you've got to tell your story. That you're going to help so many people. Well, lo and behold, <laughs> since last time, uh, we now have a Doretta book <laughs> called Living Victoriously that we're going to talk about. So um, definitely she's telling her story, and I think it's worth telling again and, and how, how this all happened in, is it less than two years? Yeah. It has been, yes. It has been. It, it's amazing. So first of all, let me tell you a little bit about co Points of View, the coaching game. Um, it's just a game. It's the best tool that I've found. I don't know. There may be. I'm sure there are other ones out there. And it's designed. It's a card game um, or game with cards in it. And it's designed to bring right and left brain thinking together. And um, I find the results amazing. <laughs> and, and I can always take the credit for it. So it's, it's really <laughs> kind of cool. <laughs> and I, I usually ask my guests. It's like, well, pick out a card and tell me which one sings to. And Doretta goes, okay, the one I picked was Everything is Possible. She goes, it brought tears to my eyes, so therefore I knew that's it. So tell me a little bit about why, why this card. Well, when, I, when you sent me that, you know I know the cards. I have a deck of my own. Mm -hmm. But when I saw it the other day, it hit me and it brought tears to my eyes. It, it, it just like brought up a well of emotion of gratitude because everything in my life has been possible. Anything that I have wanted, God has showed me, my being still, my taking a minute to pause, has showed me a way to get what I wanted. I wanted to be off drugs. I found a way. I wanted to be in connection with my children. I found a way. Mm -hmm. I, wanted to, I wanted to be married. I found a good man. <laughs> <laughs> That's I a wanted hard to be way. a nurse. <laughs> I found a way to get off drugs and become a nurse. Yeah. I lived with AIDS for over 23 years. It's like, you can't tell me that everything is not possible. And that's it. I've never, she's sort of given you a glimpse of uh, this is not a lady who was born with the old silver spoon in the mouth right. saying, okay, daddy will take me through college. Uh, not happening. So tell us a little bit about a little bit about your background and how you became a coach mm -hmm. and then what you're doing now with all this. And then we're going to talk about this fantastic book, which kind of makes it easy for you to coach yourself, mm -hmm. that, which is exactly. I th it's so good. That's so good. And, um, Actually, the entire the total title is total title <laughs> is living victoriously strategies strategies to empower women with a chronic diagnosis. So tell us a little bit about where you're coming from. Where you mentioned drugs, AIDS, mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> all well, of that. Uh, I'm an incest survivor, and when I was younger, in my early twenties, I started shooting drugs to deal with the shame, the depression, all of that, that I felt around my, uh, mm -hmm. the incest with my father. Because the last time, I was abused from six to about 10 or 12, but 10 and 11. And then, in, when I, and I just started telling this part of the story. When I was in my teenage years, my father got me an apartment and did many things for me. And then one night, he came to me and said he needed me more than he needed sleep, and I had sex with him. Mm -hmm. And the shame of that, made me start shooting drugs. The shame of that act that I didn't say no mm -hmm. made me really devalue myself. Mm -hmm. And I lost my daughter and I lost many, my, my life just spiraled. I felt like I had no value at all. It was the beginning, yeah. That was the beginning downward. of my spiral yeah. down. And in the midst of that, I wound up, if it, I, I contracted AIDS. I didn't find out that till like 93. But I just went through a really hell of a whole maybe I would say six or seven years of using drugs, of mm -hmm. losing my youngest daughter, of depression, you know, thoughts of suicide, really horrible place. Mm. And then I got myself together when I went into a rehab, and uh, the woman in the rehab suggested that I go away. She was like, if you think you could just leave this 30-day rehab and go back to work, and you're going to be all right. She was like, if you don't take some time to go to Minnesota, because Minnesota at that time was a haven of rehab. Was it really? Oh, oh yes. Okay. Hazelden was it, honey. I had no idea. Oh, I Because yes. I worked for Phoenix House. I always thought that was the haven. No, <laughs> Minnesota was the place oh. for high-end, good. I'm not talking ah. about the hardcore drugs. I'm talking mm -hmm. about stuff that's going to really get to you and really deal with your issues, but in a gentle setting. Okay. Phoenix was more, get over there. Yeah, and it was 18 months. <laughs> you, know, you didn't get out no, in 30 no. days. Yeah. No. 
<laughs> so, no, no. Yeah. so I went to Minnesota for about mm -hmm. about eight months, mm -hmm. and I really dealt with all of the, really got into therapy, really got into forgiving myself, even to starting the forgiveness process of looking at my father differently. Wow. And I talk about that in there. That's a real big issue in letting stuff go is forgiveness. Or you will stay Yana stuck Vincent in the mire of it. just constantly drills that home. Forgiveness, not oh, for yeah. anybody else, for you. And for you, it's and your it freedom. it sounds simple, but it, it's not. It's not. Oh, <laughs> no. it's taking years. And I still have moments where, you know, it'll spring up or I get that, why did you saw it? And I let that go. Because mm. that's, that'll keep you mired in the bull, in the bull stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be there. Bullshit, yeah. yeah. And so after that, I, you know, I came back, I got in right into nursing school, I got myself together, became a nurse, and I think the month that I was, I graduated nursing school and got a job on the age unit, I was tested. They said all the nurses have to be tested to work on, this, they're gonna work on this unit. And in my mind, because I know this was 93, 10 years before I had been an IV drug abuser, all my friends are dead. I don't have any friends wow. that shot, I shot drugs with, none that I know of. Mm. They were going like this from pneumonia. It was PCP, pneumocystis yeah, yeah. carmini. I know that now. Then they were just calling it pneumonia. And in, in 83, they didn't connect AIDS. They didn't even no, have a name a, then. Yeah, it was called fever of unknown origin. And ah. they were just dying. And I was like, mm -mm. the one thing that we have in common, because it was people from Long Island. It was people from upstate. It was rich people, poor people. The only thing that all of us had in common was where we shot drugs in this ah. place on Pacific Street or this place up in Harlem, which was like 116th Street then. Mm. That, and I was like, it's those needles. I don't care what they're saying. That's the only thing. Everybody's dying from different walks of life. Those needles. And I stopped and I got my life together. But I was I was positive all those years and didn't know it. Wow. So after I was diagnosed, I just what I believe what saved me is because I had started my work on the forg forgiveness. I believe. Really? Oh, yes. I believe there's no way I believe I will be this healthy, this at peace with my life, had I not done the work in Minnesota, had I not started it then. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, that started in like 88. Had I not started that work, I wouldn't have been able to take an AIDS, a HIV diagnosis, and a week after that, an AIDS diagnosis, I wouldn't have been able to accept that and find and grasp. Because I would have still been grasping at the, you did this to me. Yeah. I would have still been Blame grasping at, somebody else, I'm a yeah. victim. The Course in Miracles, I don't know if you ever heard of it, I'm sure you have. Marianne Williams. That yeah. taught me how to think I'm not a victim of the world I see. So I was mm. no longer a victim to my father or anything that happened to my childhood. It taught me how to, another saying that I always grasp onto is I'm choosing or I want, I'm choosing to see this differently. Uh. To see my father differently, to see myself differently. I'm not an ogre for not stopping him that night. I was a person who was weak, lost, and felt obligated. Right, I was right. a young girl that didn't think she had a voice. I was not a whore, a slut, or less than anyone else. All the, I was somebody, all the names you called yourself. Right? All the names I called myself. <laughs> yeah. I was not none, any of that. Yeah. I was just somebody that didn't have a voice. Yeah. But hell, I have one now. <laughs> For her and, and a whole lot of other yeah. folks. <laughs> That's interesting. I had someone on here who said, um, she tells her client, see things newly. And yeah, I go, I love they, that I word. Love see that. things newly. newly. It's like, just mm -hmm. look at it a different way. Yes. And you also had a guardian angel. I remember that. And, oh, um, yes. Uh, the nurse who told you the yes. diagnosis, right? I, I gave her a name in the book. You get, we, we're I, looking I, for that woman. <laughs> I'm looking I for her, I gave her the name of Susan. <laughs> yes, she was definitely, I believe, in our lives, in each area of our lives sometimes, each challenging area, God puts an angel, and she was mine. And yeah. when I was diagnosed, this guy was supposed to give me my diagnosis. He did the initial testing, and he was supposed to give me the diagnosis. And when I walked in, my gut, first of all, that night before, I knew, I you went, knew. I meditate, yeah. I, I meditate, and I knew, it was like God telling me, you have this, but you're gonna be okay. I, I tell you, I went back in the meditation shop, because I was like, I ain't hear the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> but when I got up from the meditation, I called and I asked somebody to go with me. And when I walked in the clinic that day, I asked, I saw him, and I said, I don't want you to give me 
my diagnosis. I want that woman. It's like she was up in like a loft, and I remember looking at her. Light behind her, maybe. So just help to me. Touch. I know, I know. I've, I've I was had like, that I experience. want her to give me my results. She was like, she's the director. She don't give results. And I said, and I'll walk out if she doesn't, because I'm not gonna. I need a space yeah. that I feel like she could give me. I didn't know this woman from Adam. <laughs> and but still I don't. Just We're still trying to figure out who yeah, she was. <laughs> one experience, one time. <laughs> and so she came into the room, and she came in with an attitude. Because I seen her talking with him in the, in the area. And she came in, and she sat down. And I sat down. And so I said, could you just give me a, br a minute to take a deep breath? So I, I remember going... And bringing my hand back to my chest, she didn't allow me to do that. She was like, you're positive, but you knew that, right? <laughs> and she said it just like that. Like, I got work to do. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and she said that because it was a list. And I was everything on that list but a gay white man. <laughs> yeah. So she was like, I know you, you knew. knew. <laughs> you, you knew I there was know. a good chance. Was, <laughs> you, everything else you then did. So you had to. But I think the shock in my face. Because I left the room. Mm. I left the room. My body was there, but my mind was like I went down a tunnel. Mm -hmm. And I heard her talking, but it was like everything was flashing in front of me. Yeah. Everything, 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 everything I had been through. I was thinking, dear Lord, I just graduated nursing school. I just went through Minnesota. My life is together. How is this happening? Again, what, what's oh going my God. on? I know. Do yeah. I have the strength <laughs> to even think about this? And then I worked on the age unit, so I'm thinking about all of them. Yeah, yeah. All the positive thinking that I had known. I'm a uni I'm a student of unity. We believe what you think and what you hold, you create. Mm -hmm. All that went out the window <laughs> in that moment. I all I see was myself wasting away. But she kept talking and she kept saying, Look all you come through. You don't have to believe what you read, what and what you see every day. What if you think things differently? What if you believed that you could live with this virus? What if you didn't believe everything that you were looking at every day? And so she kept talking, kept talking. Look at all the stuff you've come through. You're nervous. You come over, overcome this. And as she was talking, I just kept coming back I to the room. Back. I kept came coming back. back. And I kept remembering who I was and who I am. And I was like, okay, I did do that. Okay, I did. Because look at me. I, went, I left New York and went to Minnesota, created <laughs> residency so I could get in the read. That took a whole process. So all of that just came to my mind like, maybe I could do that. And she just, one thing she gave me, she, I'm looking for the word. She equipped me mm. with a whole different thought system. Not a thought system, because I, like I said, I'm a unity student. So she reminded me. It's like God took him, because he would have given me some slogans from N.A. Because that's what he was throwing at me when I was in and the in testing. And in truthfulness, that's what everybody was getting. It was like a little bit of hope, but everybody knew that really, no, you know, she there wasn't, were no And see, she solutions. wasn't giving me that. She was giving me what I already knew, but yeah. in that moment, she was I needed reminding to, you. Yeah. There you go. I needed to hear it. Had I, I would have walked out there depressed. Maybe not, but I'm just saying I left there with information about which I already knew Marianne Williamson, but she gave me meetings that Marianne Williamson was given every Thursday night for people with AIDS. No with, with, oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know At she the did New that. York Center. Ah, she nice. gave me information on alternative therapies. I was equipped. Just like I knew about AZT, she stacked me with stuff on the other level. And I have lived 20, over 23 years which with alternative therapies. 80% of my, <laughs> listen, and my doctor always asked me, always said, and I've shared this on the last program, he said, all this gray hair I got is from you. <laughs> and you're non-compliant behind. <laughs> but last week, and every so often, he asks me to speak to his students, he teaches as well. For the first time in the 23 years, I got a tap. Because every time I think that he said this, it, it just validates a person believing in their own voice. He mm. stood in front of this class and said, she has never listened to me. And that's why she's still here. Oh, my goodness. Because we didn't know what we were doing back then. No, no. I had never heard him say that until that day. Really? Wow. He said all, he gave me D4T, and they didn't even have names. <laughs> they were just coming up with stuff and try this. Quick Savannah, sure, try that. Yeah. So Steve had me thinking like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Like I had, I had my Steve thoughts. coming out to you. <laughs> no, listen to me. Listen, 
the medication would have you thinking like Mickey. Like your thoughts would not be Lori. It would sound like Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck. <laughs> <laughs> and people would still take it because they believed everything their doctor said. That was that. Was, yeah. I took one night of him, Mickey Mouse. I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> this is not going to work. <laughs> this is yeah. not going to work. I went and found some alternative stuff. <laughs> but um, and and that's what did. It. And I noticed that you're tapping. So tell us about tapping, because because uh, oh, uh, your tapping is. I have to get some water. Sure. <laughs> Because uh, uh, I saw that, I saw, actually I just saw Doretta was doing something, I, do, I thought she was instructing people how to tap on um, the, something, yeah, you said join me, it was on the Facebook page. Oh, wellness. Go, oh, she just started doing it, she goes, oh, no, 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 I've been doing this for a long time, so tell well, me about that. Well, I started that. tapping is emotional freedom technique. In our bodies, we have meridians, you know, it's in, our body is full of energy. When trauma, upset, illness happens to us, those energy senses get disrupted. And what tapping does, and we tap really every day unconsciously when you hold your head or when you do like this. Uh, or when, when you, you shake your leg. When yeah. you do like this or when you do like this. Those are all tapping points. And you just don't know you're doing you. Oh, no those are tapping kidding. points. We automatically Go know how to soothe, our, soothe ourselves. Hmm, and get that's into, interesting. But tapping shows you. It takes yeah. you. You know, maybe even though I feel this pain and even though it's in my chest, and I don't know why I'm feeling it. And you, you rate it, you get a, you in, a in moment problem, mm -hmm. you rate it from zero, this is a little snap it, then yeah. I'm telling you, it's a whole yeah. process. <laughs> and you rate it from zero to 10, and then you start tapping. And then after the end of like three rounds, you see where are you? Is it, let's say the anxiety, is the anxiety still a 10? Usually it's a five or six, sometimes it's completely gone. but. Each emotion or each thing we're experiencing has a leg to it that goes somewhere else. So when you tap, yeah. you're breaking this down, but it may be something else to hold in that in place. It may be something over here, and then that comes up. Like I made, I started tapping with a woman the other night. She was tapping about being fearful for going on did her, her speech, she's giving a nice, a big speech in mm. front of a lot of people. And that's what we started on. By the end of that, it was about the upset and her uh, child support custody bite fight. That's what we ended with. She was like, "It's also she was like, I don't know it's what to amazing. do with you, Doretta." <laughs> and then she told me, she said, the, "The last time we tapped on me going back to him, it never crossed my mind since then." It's amazing what tapping points and holding a mm -hmm. thought or issue. It's been around it, for so long. And you could probably tell us how long, but it, I know it's been around for so long. I'm involved in something called havening, which is the same thing, but like, you know, just really taking soothing, care of yourself. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And that's what we need. And, and we don't do enough of it. No. That's why I loved sharing about so it. So you're on Facebook teaching people? Where can people learn I'm how on to scope, do that with you? On and, scope. And I'm on, um, I'm doing a blab now every Wednesday night at blab. 8. Blab. <laughs> blab dot I M slash Doretta Gadsden, D-O-R-E-T-T-A. I'll write it on the bottom yeah. of the screen there. Because my last name is complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. It's actually spelled the way it's, <laughs> the way it sounds it should be. Listen, <laughs> I want to talk about this. We only have like 10 minutes. So I want to talk a little bit about this fantastic book. The thing that I love about it is, one, it's your story. But two, she has like coaching exercises to reinforce everything. So wh tell me how it came about. Because the last time we talked, I'm going, you got to tell your story. And I obviously, you believe you had to tell your story. So. Well, this one came about, I've been wanting to write a book but my book my life is in so many pieces there's an incest there's a drug abuse there's me you know my mother and my relationship so I was doing a, I give vision board classes but one day I took a vision board class mm. and they said create a, something you want to see come in the next year and I said I want to teach about because everybody telling me to speak about how I live so long with AIDS and how I'm so healthy I want to do that and I made the, the vision board and I, you know, I put the picture and th th and I put the name, but it was living, vic it was uh, victorious living. It didn't say living victoriously. Mm -hmm. And the next, within uh, 11 months, the book was born. Huh. Because I wanted to show people that the main thing about this book, what uh, my main purpose is to show people, not with just with AIDS, with anybody, that you have to, you have the strength to make a decision for yourself. You don't have to listen to your doctor. My doctor, I love as a person. Mm -hmm. He has been good to me as a person. He has listened to me as a person. He has honored my choices. Mm -hmm. 
But other people's doctors may not do that. They may try to, I have had p friends whose doctor dis dismissed them or made them think they had to take certain drugs. I want each person to know that they don't have to do that. They can research, if you have diabetes, research how you could heal yourself. Yeah. Or how yeah. you could marry alternative medicine with traditional medicine. I always I, loved a doctor with a foot in both worlds. I I'm think not that's saying just so, that me yeah. traditional medicine is not good because no, it heals. If you break it saves arm, lives. I want to go to the hospital. Well, you know? certainly, yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. So I'm marry the two, and that's what I that's what I do in the book. I show you how I met my doctor, how I, you know, built a relationship with him, how I chose to take care of myself as far as my medication, my support system, how I learned to forgive myself, my family, and my father around the incest. And that's vital in he any form of healing. And, and I know in here somewhere is how to deal with when you get a diagnosis. Yes, that's that, the first chapter. That's, and the, that's second the rough chapter. stuff. It's yeah. like you, there you make a choice. Give yourself, I would say give yourself a little bit of time to oh, grieve definitely. and moan and whine and all blame of that. and I all of that. I did tell <laughs> someone the other night and I was gu guiding them through the forgiveness and the cheer work and tapping and all of that. And I said, oh, this may sound five minutes, this is a process. Yeah. You, yeah. It's a process. It's stacks of emotions we have dealt with all our lives. Don't think you're sitting through one of any session. You're gonna right. lighten up, you're gonna lighten up, and then it's layers, it's like an onion. And right. you just keep tapping. And then you may go back keep, down again, but you gotta you, keep pulling yourself back But when back you go up, back yeah. down, when you're working, you, you don't can, go as far. There yes, you go. Exactly. You don't dip. Cause I dip, in a minute Super. I go into a whole, you know, I don't feel well there. Snap out of it. You got 15 minutes to sit, 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 sit in this. I remember you told me <laughs> once that, I, I, that you were in the hospital and your husband said, you know what? We don't have time for this. My it's husband, like, real <laughs> thank God for my husband. He's the other angel. Yeah, we just don't have time for this. Yeah, we don't like, have, I, <laughs> you're going to be in here long? How long are you going to be in here? I <laughs> talked, we were talking about that the other day. He said, you always go back to that. Because I was in the hospital. <laughs> And I had been there for like a month, yeah. and then I, I, I zeroed back in, and I wanted all the balloons in the car. She said, listen, girl, you got about three days no to be No balloons, no cars. <laughs> None. Get out. We are not entertaining <laughs> that. And I think that's another angel in my life because he compliments what I think. Yeah. He, he, he has his body work that he does. Uh -huh. I have mine, and we compliment. So that whole wallowing in the hospital, like, who is this? This <laughs> not is not you, Doretta, no. <laughs> Just that <laughs> And that's important, a support system. Oh, yes. That that's will, what, exactly. You know, there, you, it, is it helpful to have people who sit around and moan and cry no. with you? I don't think so. No. I think you need they to, keep you stuck in that. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to have empathy, but I think if you want to help somebody, it's like, well, let's find out what our alternatives are. Let's exactly. explore now. This mm -hmm. is We're on a new venture. We, we may not want to be on this venture, but we are. Exactly. So let's keep it moving. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so is that in there also? All of that. Mm -hmm. All of it, yeah. yeah. I have a whole little chapter about him, a whole little <laughs> chapter about the love for my grandson that ah, motivated me to I stay alive. Tell me yeah. about that. Yeah. Little chapters and yeah. about Maggie. All that that we talked about, a little bit of that mm -hmm. is in there. And it's each one and it's in a there. little, it's, a, it's, it's called a quick read. Yeah. That's what Amazon calls it. It's 55 pages. Wow. But it's full of good stuff. I might say, 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 uh, if yeah, I may say something. Yeah, you may, and I'm yeah. going to say it also because I think your story speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. My God, the fact that you're sitting here talking to me and, <laughs> and helping other people, that's what's amazing. Um, that, you know, against all odds, you're sitting here. And even there are no odds for you being helpful to other people in the same situation, and it's so good. I mean, even the fact that you wanted to be an RN after being a drug user, I mean, that's kind of weird. people are telling me nobody will never let you in <laughs> their medication class. How can you be an class. RN? You, yeah, they're that, not going to let you give drugs So stuff. many people told me, I was like, I don't care what you're saying. I'm giving I'm it gonna a try. It. I'm going to do it. Yeah, and, you and did I did it. it. And then as soon as you got there, it's like almost another little punch. It's like, oh, got a diagnosis for you here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and it's I was like, like oh, right. God, here we go. <laughs> but what you've done is kind of just share it and let people know, you know what, there, there are many ways to um, live your life. And, and it's Many ways to live your life and many ways to take your, what you see as a disadvantage and make an advantage for someone else. Oh, wow, yeah. You know, my voice helps other people. Definitely. My, a patient of mine, her son was, you know, he forgot he had told me he had AIDS, but like, I guess about two months ago, he was really wallowing it, wallowing, wallowing in it, and he 
was like, uh, I was telling him positive stuff, and he was like, no, you don't know what I have. So I would, I, so he said, when you go out, I'm gonna go out with you. He said, oh, I have AIDS. I was like, I have AIDS too. And I took his mother two years. He was like, stop saying that, Doretta. I rolled up my sleeves. <laughs> I said, you funny. see these tracks? <laughs> These are not scars. These are tracks. Look real close. Yeah. You can't hardly see him. He started laughing. He was like, you do? You really do? Get out. That man went from a depressed and slumped over state to really in that moment. Mm -hmm. Now, what he did later, because I didn't see him again because I was discharged his mom. And it happened on the day I was discharged. I didn't even see him anymore, which my husband was glad when I told him. <laughs> I told her. He was like, oh, God. You know, I told the patient. Now you'll never... <laughs> He's always going now. I ain't paying him no money either, though. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you I think you're a little too free oh with the information. <laughs> she wrote a book. He may as well get over it. Yeah. He, he needs it. Yeah, he's helping me promote it now. He, 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 he's there, finally. Okay, good, good. So, yeah, it could help other people in many ways, and you'd be surprised. Yeah. This yeah. book helped. The, the week that it came out, this woman called me totally unrelated to the virus or sickness or anything like that. The book helps in many ways. She, she messaged me on Facebook. She said, I want you to know that my mother's been passed away. I think her mother was passed away. And she was like, you helped me understand my mother in a way I hadn't understand her. Wow. Now, who expected like, that? <laughs> why? I was like, I told my husband, look at this. How did that this happen? is around, <laughs> this has nothing to do with illness. Yeah. This had, yeah. this had to do with me talking about how I abandoned my children. Yeah. Yeah. And she needed to hear that and to understand that I, w I was lost mm -hmm. and I didn't know any better. That yeah. I loved my children, but I didn't, I, I was Just hurting. didn't know how to do it, yeah. I yeah. was all into my own hell. Yeah. You know? It's, yeah. Well, how, tell us how we can find this. I know it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. You can uh, go under the name of the book, Living Victoriously Strategies. Or Doretta, I'm sure. Or if Doretta. You, isn't that yes. cool? Go yes. to Amazon and put your name in and they get a book. And Yay. you get a book. That's really cool. <laughs> Very cool. I'm a little jealous. Or yes. you, could, you could write your own. <laughs> I guess you I could, 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 yes. Or you could go to, um, you could go to my website, website womenwillbloom.com, and schedule a free session with me and see if you like tapping or you like coaching, mm -hmm. it's free session, and then if you like And if it, you buy a book, she'll autograph it oh, for you. Oh, definitely, I'll yeah. autograph and it, uh, yes. Yeah, just if you buy it when you're in coaching with me, or in a free, because mm -hmm. if you buy it on Amazon, it's gonna come straight to you. If you buy it after you talk to me, the free session, Even better, then yeah. I could Or buy your, it and then bring it to your session with Doretta. <laughs> One of the but two. But a, yeah. a lot of my sessions are on, on Zoom. Phone. People oh, are okay. in other countries or around the country. I do oh, Zoom. Okay. I do my All sessions right. on Zoom. She's, give, she's giving me a couple of names and stuff, stuff on there. So I've never <laughs> even heard of this, but okay, I'm going to check it all out. You never know. Um, we've got like 30 seconds left. I can't believe that. And, and as always, I could use another two hours for Doretta because she's got <laughs> stories and, and, and all kinds of tips on um, how to just live better, living how to live victoriously. Uh, you're a shining example. Uh, this picture of you is absolutely beautiful. And I think you are, as we say in IPEC, we both graduated IPEC. Mm -hmm. Not only does she talk the talk, but she walks the walk. And uh, that's a hard thing to do, and especially with everything. So thank you so much for being you're on here. You're very welcome, Laurie. Thank you. You're a great guest. Mm -hmm.